Hi, everyone, and welcome to our belated tech forum presentation. Today, we're going to be talking about the most enjoyable audiobook in the world. Just a quick introduction. My name is Wendy, and I am one of the editors of the W3C audiobook specification, as well as a co-chair of the publishing working group. And when I'm not doing all of those things, I'm also a senior QA at Rapidton Kobo. Hey, my name is Marisa. I am a software developer at the DAISY Consortium. Uh, we focus on accessibility and publishing. And uh, my work with the W3C is a member of the publishing working group and the editor of and co-chair of the synchronized media, synchronized narration community group. Today, we're gonna to talk about three main things. So first off, we're gonna give you an introduction to the audiobook specification an overview of the format and how it works. Then I'll talk about the in synchronized narration specification and how it works. And then we'll do a live demo of the audiobook that we've produced. So audiobooks. When we're in this presentation, we're going to be specifically talking about the W3C audiobook specification. Audiobooks is a specification, also known as a recommendation, that is being produced by the publishing working group at the W3C, also known as the World Wide Web Consortium. These are the same folks that have brought you HTML, CSS, and many other amazing web things. This organization creates recommendations uh, around web technologies, and audiobooks is just the latest thing that will be coming out of this. When we set out to create the audiobook specification, the main focus was to look at the current state of audiobooks in the market today and see where things were going really well, things weren't going so well, and is it, was it possible for us to create a better experience for audiobooks, not just in the listening experience, but also in distribution and accessibility. So. There's a couple of features that are common across audiobooks today in the market, and then there's a couple of things that we'll be talking about that are new. And we, the specification was designed to allow these things to happen in audiobooks where they just weren't happening today. So two, one major thing that we've added that didn't exist in audiobooks previously is a table of contents. Um, a lot of audiobook players have a table of contents feature, but it's actually kind of artificially built out of the list of tracks or list of chapters that are in the audiobook and it's not always the most accurate. So the audiobook specification actually allows content creators to provide a detailed table of contents, not dissimilar to one that you might see in an EPUB or a print book. And it gives users the opportunity to explore the book in a nonlinear way. So for instance, if you're reading something, maybe you've listened to it before and you just wanna catch up on something in chapter three, this allows you to actually find chapter three and get to it really quickly. Um, and audiobooks, one of the things that we did in the audiobook specification is we provided a way for additional content or supplemental content to be included because a lot of audiobooks today are not just audio. They also might include things like HTML pages, images, or other resources that currently not a lot of audiobooks can share. The other main thing that we wanted to do was to make audiobooks accessible. There is a current accessible format for audiobooks, but it's not the mainstream format. And we thought, why not create a format where it can both be used in the mainstream, but it can also provide accessibility features directly as opposed to having to create separate content for accessible communities. So the way we do this in the audiobook spec is to use the alternate feature. This allows a content creator to actually provide an alternate file to an audio resource, which means that you could actually provide, for instance, text file, HTML, or as I'm about to talk about, synchronized narration. But the way this all works is that we actually use a JSON-based manifest file. For anyone who doesn't know what that is, it's JavaScript object notation. And it basically is just a, a, a format that allows you to kind of really cleanly describe and list the contents of a file. So all of the audiobooks use this JSON-based manifest file to tell the user agent or an audio player everything the user will need to know about the content. The first part and most important part is a reading order. This is kind of the final authority list of all the audio resources in the audiobook. What are they? What are they called? How long? And what order to play them in? 
there's also a resource, the resources section of the, of the manifest. This is where the supplemental content comes in a lot. You can provide a list of all of the additional content that an audiobook might have, like that table of contents I mentioned, any images like a cover or maybe some photographs, and additional supplemental content. We also created a packaging format for audiobooks that allows uh, content creators to actually package up their audiobooks in a zip-based format that we call LPF, or lightweight packaging format. And this means that instead of the current system where a lot of audiobooks actually have to be sent around in maybe a folder format or as individual files, uh, a content creator can actually package it up in an LPF and send it in one piece, which helps with you know, file organization and making sure that everything travels really cleanly. As I mentioned, there's another part to the audiobook specification, and that's synchronized narration. Synchronized narration is actually a separate specification. It's a note that was produced by the synchronized narration work community group. And what its purpose is, is to provide a method for content creators to synchronize two types of media together. In the audiobooks context, context this actually means matching text to audio resources. And it's really, it, it has an opportunity to create a really good accessible format. Anyone who's familiar with the Born Accessible movement in EPUB knows that it's really important for us to be able to, to create content that's accessible from the start. And this is one of the goals of audiobooks. Using synchronized, synchronized narration with audiobooks actually gives content creators to, the chance to create fully accessible content from the beginning. And it means that a, a content creator can create content once for all users, as opposed to having to create multiple formats of content or multiple modalities of content just to meet different needs. It saves a lot of time, it saves a lot of effort, and it means that all users can access content in the same ways, be that through a retailer, through a library, or through you know, special organizations. But this is all a lot of words. Marisa is going to now go into how these things work and show off what one looks like in real life. Okay, great. So what I've got are three versions of the same book. Uh, and each version is a little bit different in the type of content that it's going to present. So let's look at the first one, which is an audio only audiobook. Cinderella or um, so it's playing the first. Can you hear it? A LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. So what we've done here is we took a LibriVox version of a fairy tale book, uh, abridged it considerably, and packaged it as a W3C audiobook. Now, what you have here is a table of contents, which shows you each chapter in the book. Um, you have some user controls for play and pause, this reading as well as forward. I can jump forward by 30 seconds, or back by 30 seconds. Um, by default, you know, when the player opens the book, it's going to play from the first chapter all the way through to the last chapter continuously. Uh, it's going to remember my last read position. So just to show you what that seems, what that looks like. The last or cat. Say I am somewhere around minute seven and a half of that book. I go back to my library. So back into the same book. Your Majesty is welcome to the castle of my Lord Marquis of Carrara. And you can see we're at the same chapter at about seven and a half minutes in. This is a really useful feature. Users really like this. Um, so they can, you know, stop reading, go do something else, and then come back and pick up right where they left off. What you can also do is add bookmarks. So I'm going to add a bookmark at this chapter at this point. And if I look in my bookmarks list, I can see my bookmark is named for the chapter and the audio or the time offset into that chapter. Um, let's see. I can also change the rate. This is a great accessibility feature. Um, people who are used to getting their content through audio often like to speed it up um, just to save time. 
and, and this might not be so true for leisure reading as it is for like scanning quickly for information. Um, the user may choose to enable this though. So let's hear it. Conversely, you could slow the rate down, uh, which is great if you're listening to something in language that you don't understand very well, or people with cognitive disabilities uh, may require this feature. So let's hear what that sounds like. Collation, which the ogre had prepared for his friends. Who were that? Uh, so I hope this gives you a pretty good idea of why even just audio plus table of contents audiobooks are way better than the audiobook experience of the past. So now, Let's go look at the next flavor of audiobook. Uh, what we have here, it's the same book. It's primarily an audiobook, but we have added text. And we added text using the alternate feature that Wendy mentioned. Um, what this is going to show is In the room. for each chapter, you can see the text that goes along with the audio. It doesn't match up. It doesn't play along, you know. If I skip forward in the audio, the text is still quite static. I can scroll it. I can interact with it, you know, as HTML text. Um, but it's just, you know, it gives you some accessibility, but it's, you know, it's not the best accessibility. Uh, otherwise, all the same features remain. You could add bookmarks. Um, you could change the rate, the volume, move around the table of contents. And so is Gretel from the Blue Fairy Book. Uh, then you also have access to some of the visual properties, like in this case, I can change the font size. So you can see now the font is a lot bigger. Um, I'm just gonna go reset that before I show you the final demonstration. So the last book we wanna show is an audiobook with synchronized narration. And what this means is that the text and the audio are synchronized during playback. So you'll see the text highlighted as the audio for it plays. So let's look at that. I'm just going to make the font bigger. And I can change the highlight color. Let's try that. Two words, indeed, exactly like her in all things. A little bit faster. And a young daughter. Unparalleled goodness and sweetness of temper, which she took from her mother, who was the best creature in the world. Now, as you see, each sentence is highlighted, and the audio for that sentence plays at the same time. Now, instead of these buttons at the bottom moving back and forward by 30 seconds, uh, when you're reading in synchronized narration mode, you can move back and forward by phrase. So, let's see what that is like of the wedding over, that the mother-in-law beget the good qualities of the, she employed her in the meanest work of the house, in a sorry garret. The so as you can mission, see, however, since it, I can move through the text by also, phrase, they were more, our young, more backwards. With the, uh, if I want to start playback somewhere in the middle, I can I wish I could, click I a wish phrase. I could. She was not able to speak the rest. And it starts there. Um, also, what we have in this mode is something called captions. So, because we have that, you know, synchronization between the audio and the text at a fairly finely grained level per sentence, uh, what I was able to do in my player was implement a captions mode. If I enable that, I see. It plays uh, the book as normal. And sobbing. This godmother of hers, 
who was a fairy. But instead of seeing the text in the context of the page, uh, what the player is showing me is each sentence is shown by itself uh, in enlarged font. So it looks like a caption. Said to her, thou wishest thou couldst go to the ball. Is it not so? Y yes, cried Cinderella with a great sigh. Well, said her godmother, be but a good girl and I will contrive and I that can thou shalt to move through Cinderella the content the like I could before. To look into her mouth I could go to a different story. Hansel and Gretel. Oh, you fool. And I could she. go back. And we must all four die of hunger. You may just as... And she left a no so really so can set it. Cheerful the set of stories. Have not been able to sleep for hunger. And it... So I think that's everything that I wanted to show. Um, just to tell you a little bit about this demo made for the purposes of this presentation and also to show, you know, uh, what some of the end user benefits are for audiobooks and for synchronized narration. Um, this is built in vanilla JavaScript, HTML, CSS, just the, the basic building blocks of the web. Uh, it runs in a web browser with nothing special added, no extensions or anything required. Um, and it employs principles of web accessibility. So for example, I could operate it with a keyboard if I wanted to. Heard what their stepmother had said to their father. Gretel wept bitterly. Um, and I hope that we can continue to develop this demo a bit as we move forward with the synchronized narration work. So thanks everybody.